Mariana Trench, the deepest part of the world's ocean, a place tantalizingly close to the Earth's mantle, a place where no light shines and where pressure is a thousand times at what it is at sea level. What is down there? Can anything survive these wretched conditions? Hello and welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions, I'm your host Rebecca Felgate and today I'm asking what is at the bottom of the Mariana Trench? Before we dive deep into this video, I just want to remind you guys to give this video a thumbs up and leave us a comment to let us know your thoughts on the Mariana Trench and what big questions you would like us to answer next. So. The Mariana Trench is located in the western Pacific Ocean, just south of Guam. The trench is a deep scar in the Earth's crust, deeper than any peak on Earth anyway. The very bottom of the trench is officially 10,994 meters below sea level, so that's 36,070 feet down. However, some unconfirmed reports add a further 40 or so meters in depth. Basically, it's pretty deep. The Mariana Trench is pretty huge as well. It spans 1,580 miles in length and 43 miles in width. We could just call it a huge gash. The deepest part is called the Challenger Deep, which has been located on four deep sea descents, including one by Canadian film director James Cameron in 2012. Just hearing the song okay up there? James Cameron, explorer of the sea. Yes, James, we'd hear the song. So what is down there when James Cameron and his research teams aren't down there testing their depth limits? Well, these four descent missions have shed a lot of light into this dark pocket of the planet. Living at the bottom of the trench is everyone's placid mate, the sea cucumber. What do they do? Well, not a lot. They slink about and suck and eat. Also joining them at the very bottom of the ocean are amphipods. These basically look like albino shrimp. Marine biologists have also observed tiny organisms in samples from the seabed. How do they survive that far down? Well, mostly from sea snow. What is sea snow? Well, it's the falling cells from dead animals higher up in the ocean, like whales and other big fish. Hey, wanna build a sea snow snowman? You. Gross. Unfortunately, with all the waste dropping down to the bottom of the seabed like this, pollution levels are high at the bottom of the trench. A 2016 research expedition found very high levels of a chemical toxin called PCB. This was found in the sediment of the trench. This toxin was banned on land in the 70s as it can cause liver damage and affect hormones in the body. Clearly, the life at the bottom of the trench is impervious to the harm most animals would be exposed to with this toxin around. So, aside from some sea cucumbers, albino shrimp, and loads of dead cells, what else is at the bottom of the trench? Well, at the moment, a whole lot of nothing. But that may not always be the case. Presumably, due to its location near Guam, the trench has been commandeered by the United States who have made it a United States national monument. What do the Americans want to do with their monument and area of key planetary interest? Well, dump some nukes in it of course, America. Plans to dump inactive nuclear devices in the trench have been discussed, however, it is currently a crime by international law to ocean dump nuclear waste, so we'll see about that one. On top of that, it is predicted that the shifting tectonic plates could push waste from the trench into the Earth's mantle, and we have no idea how nuclear substances and the mantle may react together. It could be pretty awful. So, we know what is down there, but what does it sound like? Well, actually, it isn't as quiet as you would think. NOAA researchers recorded sounds near the bottom of the trench, and it seems you can hear distant whale moans, the far off sounds of ships passing by Guam, and even the distant sounds of earthquakes. Although scientists did once hear a very strange sound indeed, they've dubbed it the Western Pacific Biotwang. Some people have said that this could be the sound of a baleen whale making previously unheard of mating calls, or it could be something else entirely. We just don't know. The Mariana Trench is the deepest natural trench in the world, located in the western Pacific Ocean around 200 kilometers east of the Mariana Islands. Its maximum known depth is 10,984 meters, but some measurements put its deepest point at 11,034 meters. That is deep, bruh. So deep that if you stuck Mount Everest inside of it, the tip of the mountain would still be 2 kilometers underwater. We don't know a whole lot about what lies inside the Mariana Trench, but what if we somehow drained it? 
What exactly would we find? That is the question we are asking right now on Life's Biggest Questions. Hello and welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions, the channel that asks the fundamental questions of life, and occasionally we answer them too. If you're lucky. I'm Charlotte Dobre and thanks for clicking on this video. Subscribe for more daily head scratchers and follow the creative team behind LBQ on social media. The Mariana Trench is the deepest natural trench in the world, and hardly any light reaches the deepest points. There is also a tremendous amount of pressure at the bottom. The water column above exerts a pressure of 1,086 bars, which is 1,000 times the standard atmospheric pressure at sea level. To put it into perspective, it would be like having an African elephant stand on your big toenail. Ouch. Yet somehow, life still exists within the Mariana Trench. Xenophyrophores have been found inside the trench by the Scripps Institution of Oceanography at a record depth of 10.6 kilometers below the sea surface. First discovered in 1883 by Henry Bowman Brady, xenophyrophores are unicellular organisms found on the ocean floor. They extract minerals from their surroundings and use them to form an exoskeleton. According to data, microbial life does exist within the trench. Not only that, it thrives. 80% of life on our planet lives in the deep ocean under conditions that are completely unfathomable to us. At the same time, there would likely be piles of whale and shark carcasses being fed on by deep sea creatures at the bottom of the trench. There are also larger creatures in the trench, observed during a 1960s descent. Flatfish and shrimp, according to Picard, who also said, I quote, the bottom appeared light and clear, a waste of firm diatomaceous ooze. Other scientists are skeptical of Picard's observations and suggest he might have actually seen a sea cucumber. In December of 2014, a new species of snailfish was found at the depth of 8,145 meters, in addition to giant crustaceans. These organisms are able to grow quite large due to a process known as deep sea gigantism. The point is, if we drain the Mariana Trench, we would probably find a plethora of undiscovered species that we never knew existed because the trench is so inaccessible to humans. But life isn't all you will find in the Mariana Trench. The effect of humans, pollution, and waste are seen even at the deepest, most inaccessible parts of the ocean. During Victor Vescovos' record breaking dive in 2014, he reported seeing a plastic bag as well as candy wrappers in the trench. Research has also shown that amphipods that were found in the trench ingest microplastics, and 100% of them were found to have eaten at least one piece of synthetic material. To make matters even worse, Scientific American reported that tests found the presence of carbon 14 inside the body of aquatic animals. Carbon 14 is from nuclear bomb testing. Contrary to popular belief, the trench is not the part of the seafloor that's closest to the center of the Earth. You you won't find liquid magma at the bottom. This is because the Earth is an oblate spheroid, not a perfect sphere. But at the bottom of the trench, there is something going on called tectonic plate subduction. It's actually been proposed that the Mariana Trench could be a place where humans could dispose of nuclear waste, in the hopes that the waste might be pushed down into the Earth's mantle. But as nuclear waste dumping is prohibited by international law, that just isn't an option. Another interesting fact, plate subduction zones are known to be associated with megathrust earthquakes. They are very sensitive areas, and it's definitely not a good idea to disrupt this ecosystem in any way. We don't know a whole lot about what happens in the Mariana Trench, what kind of life exists, what the geology is like. It would be a very interesting feat to drain the trench and find out exactly what the most mysterious part of the ocean holds. Alas, we can't drain the trench, and maybe that's a good thing. If we drained it, all the aquatic life, all the undiscovered species within the trench would die. And at the same time, if we disrupt this delicate balance by draining the trench and removing the immense pressure of the water above, this delicate ecosystem might be disrupted, and megathrust earthquakes could occur, shaking the Earth's mantle. What do you think would happen if we drained the Mariana Trench? What would we find? Let us know in the comments. Hello and welcome back to Life's Biggest Questions, the channel that asks the fundamental questions of life, and occasionally we answer them too. I'm Charlotte Dobre, and if this is your first time here, subscribe for more daily head scratchers and turn on the bell so you never miss one of our uploads. So in our previous video, what if we drain the Mariana Trench, many of you still had questions, and well, this is Life's Biggest Questions, so we wanted to start a segment where we respond to some of your Life's Biggest Questions from some of our most popular videos. It gives us a chance to connect with our fans, and it gives you more of a chance to be featured. Everybody wins. So here it is. What if we drain the Mariana Trench part 2? Draining the Mariana Trench, in case you haven't guessed by now, would not be possible. The trench is one of the deepest parts of the world's oceans. It's huge. It stretches 2,550 kilometers. Even with all the most accomplished engineers and scientists putting their heads together, we would never be able to drain the trench. There is far too much water and it's far too big. But come on, 
This is life's biggest questions. Ever sit around with a dorky group of your friends and wonder about the world? Think of this channel like we're your dorky group of friends. So let's have a conversation. Tlacoel Vargas said, you know, I don't know if I said your name right, but you said, if you drained it, you would most likely find a megalodon. I mean, truthfully, megalodons are extinct. They are supposed to be anyway. I feel like the megalodon would probably venture outside of the trench to eat, don't you? And then that would give us an opportunity to find out that it isn't extinct. But who knows, really? The trench is largely unexplored. Maybe there's a megalodon hiding down there somewhere. Avery the Cuban American said, That's not the Mariana Trench. It's the Great Blue Hole in Belize. Oopsie. Jai Carrion Dawson said, You can't. You would have to drain all the oceans because they are connected. And where would you put the water? Sorry for being technical. Don't be sorry. We tend to leave out the technicalities in our videos because technicalities take all the fun out of the question. But let's take a jab at this one. Yes, you would have to drain all the water in the oceans in order to drain the Mariana Trench. Or we could have set up a big dam, encapsulating the Mariana Trench and cutting it off from the rest of the ocean. Then from there, you could empty the water in the trench and put it in the surrounding ocean. I mean, you can't, but you could. Carl and Lance Adventure said, Video, what if we actually drained it? Me, I don't even want to know what lies beneath there. I'm not that thirsty for knowledge. Come on, sure you are. That's why you're a subscriber of Life's Biggest Questions. Shayana Lea said, Thank you for putting Mariana's Trench, the band, in the video. You can thank our wonderful editing team for that. Thanks, editors. Iso Gyro said, We don't need a what if to know that. If you want to drain the Mariana Trench, you can use the Sham Wow. Good point. I wonder how many Sham Wows it would take to drain the Mariana Trench. Like three? Three or four? Dino Cola said, just place some sponges in it. It can't be that hard. Okay, Dino Cola, you got them sponges. Let's go. Put them in the trench, see what happens. Banana Man said, the real question is what will we do with the water? Have people bathe in it and then sell it? I mean, truthfully, crazier things have been done. <coughs> Belle Delphine, sorry. <coughs> I have something in my throat. Liam Walsh said, let's raid the Mariana Trench. It can't drown us all. I'm pretty sure it could, Liam. <laughs> Austin Smith said, we know more about the moon than we do about our planet. The hell is wrong with us? Well, Austin, in all fairness, it's easier to know what the moon is like than it is to know what the ocean is like. We can see the entire face of the moon from Earth. We can't see what's in the ocean because we can't access most of it. The Racket said, wow, the Mariana Grande. Ha! Good one. Tulis Sock said, did you know you can drink a lava but only once? Hmm, I didn't. Maybe I'll drink a lava sometime. That is all for this episode of Life's Biggest Questions. We hope you enjoyed this new segment. If you want to keep watching, you should check out the playlist that's currently flashing on your screen. And make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so I can see you in a future episode of Life's Biggest Questions.